Underneath this Canadian forest is an expansive network of caves that until recently has never been seen by humans. These researchers are braving precarious and claustrophobic passageways 30 feet deep in the earth, all in a race to discover what could save millions of our lives. You plunge yourself down into totally pitch darkness. You can't even see your own hand. I have to confess here that I have to turn my brain off so that I wouldn't imagine the worst that could, what could happen in the cave. I don't like cave, yes, but I'm doing it for work. These soda straw, they are spiriothem, which spiriothem means mean the secondary mineral deposit. We thought that the formation was caused by physical and chemical interaction. But actually now everywhere we look, we see lots of bacteria that are living in this soda straw formation. Each year it grow only maybe one millimeter or smaller. So this formation can, when you really look at it, it could be, what, 500 years old or longer. Isn't it a thousand years? This length or more. Dr. Narawat Chitam, or Anne, is combing the Iron Curtain Cave and other caves for a new antibiotic that could fight the quickly swelling crisis of drug-resistant superbugs. If we go into hospital these days, some of us might not come back. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but it's, it's that dire situation right now. Or we don't have enough antibiotics in our toolbox to actually fight against this infection. What would a world without effective antibiotics really look like? More like the Dark Ages. Surgeries are far more dangerous. Childbirth mortality rates soar. Travel between countries is too risky due to outbreaks. By 2050, there will be 10 million deaths a year from drug-resistant infections, more than the annual number of deaths from cancer. And it's happening because our only antibiotics, most of which are over 30 years old, can no longer outsmart infectious bacteria. Bacteria are way smarter than us. They adapt so quickly. They are very resourceful as well. Every life on Earth, we want to survive. Bacteria are just like us in that sense. They want to survive. There will be one or two of them that are strong enough and stronger than the drug that we put in that they can still survive and then they will multiply. So basically this is the nature, the law. You have these antibiotic resistant groups of bacteria. Which means even if Anne finds the next antibiotic, one day bacteria will become resistant to it again. But a new drug would still buy us time. And with over one trillion microbial species yet to be discovered, Anne has to start somewhere. The Iron Curtain cave ecosystem is so rich with life brand new to science that there's hope at least one species could hold the formula for a new drug. The bacteria themselves are not truly antibiotics in that sense, but it is their metabolites that they produce that we use these molecules as our antibiotics and basically the source of antibiotics and new drugs. Secondary metabolites are biologically active small molecules that have often been the source of medicine in the past. They are a byproduct of bacteria, not required for survival, but for a competitive advantage against other species. However, Anne and other researchers think secondary metabolites could serve an additional purpose. I think it's there are more evidence now that these types of metabolites that they produce during their life cycle are used as a tool for communication within them or within themselves, within their own species and also between other species as well. Instead of killing each other off and use competitive mode of life or competitive mode of living, wouldn't it be more beneficial for their own community to actually communicate and work together to achieve the same goal of surviving? With that said, we want to look deeper into whether they produce certain kind of metabolites that we could use for our benefit. Understanding any details like these about bacteria's behavior or their environment could help in Anne's quest for a new antibiotic. 
And as if that task wasn't monumental enough, cave environments are facing a new threat that, if continues, could throw Anne's medicinal research off course. I never planned to study with bats, but I can see that it is important. And as a microbiologist, I feel responsible. Anne has added the plight of bats to her research because of an epidemic called white nose syndrome. This fungal infection has already killed six million bats in North America. And without bats, cave ecosystems will change. And that could be a problem for finding the next antibiotic. And even though Anne is a microbiologist, she sees the role of bats in the bigger picture. Can you imagine? It's just like you look at these thousand pieces of puzzle, and bat may be contributing to just one small piece of that puzzle. But if these pieces of puzzles actually get lost, the whole puzzle will never be complete in the same way. We need to be careful with um, the head and also our hands. We have to make sure that we are not touching or breaking off the um, mineral deposits that the, the caves have. Anne is looking for soda straw speleothems made of calcium carbonate or calcium sulfate. It is believed that the impact of calcium's positively charged ions between bacteria DNA strands could be the key to killing bacteria. We, we would like to take soda straw, popcorn, and then soy sample from the soy sample, especially from the octopus room. And we would like to set up an experiment there. Anne's research in the Iron Curtain Cave has had promising results so far, though it is a sluggish process. Bacteria can take weeks to grow, and only then can Anne determine if it shows promise against drug-resistant superbugs. Initially, we found hundreds of bacteria. We tried to isolate bacteria that live from Iron Curtain Cave in the lab, and we found 14 of them initially that show activity against multidrug resistant bacteria, all those bad bacteria. At that point, samples leave Anne's lab for genome sequencing. Now we actually single out for the two of them. So we have the two hopefully superhero right now. Out of the hundreds of samples she collected, only two have the potential to be what Anne calls superhero bacteria. But just because they work in a Petri dish doesn't mean they will work in humans. It will take billions of dollars and many years to move forward with any potential drug. And there's very little profit to be had. That's why there's been slow, if any, progress in the last few years. I do believe that we have solution, but all of us have to work together. Not just scientists, not just politicians, not just the pharmaceutical companies, not just the policy makers. Every one of us need to understand what the implications of overuse and misuse of antibiotics in our society and how we can reduce that. Anne doesn't let the daunting complications waver her. Instead, her search continues. This cave gets its name because of this beautiful backdrop here. You can see that it would take numbers of years, possibly millions of years to form. I can imagine how many species of bacteria and microorganisms that live in that structure, that formation, and maybe, maybe one of them would actually, could be our superhero that could produce new antibiotics for us one day. This episode was presented by the U.S. Air Force. Learn more at airforce.com. For more episodes of Science in the Extremes, check out this one right here. Don't forget to subscribe and come back to Seeker for more episodes. Thanks for watching.